We ready? There's not a friend like the lonely Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. None else could be there. All the answers you be there. No, not one. No. Jesus knows all about our struggle. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lonely Jesus. No, not one. No. Amen. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is not fair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is it not my way which is fair, and your ways which are not fair? When a righteous man turns away from his righteousness, commits iniquity, and dies in it, it is because of iniquity which he has done that he died. Again, when a wicked man turns away from his wickedness, which he committed, and does what is lawful and right, he preserves himself alive. Because he considers and turns away from all the transgressions which he committed, he shall surely live. He shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is not fair. O house of Israel, it is not my ways which are not fair in your ways which are not fair. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions so that iniquity will not be your ruin. Cast away from all the transgressions which you have committed and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. For why should you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of one who dies, says the Lord God. Therefore, turn and live. And I have read Ezekiel chapter 19, and this is verses 25 through 32. May the Lord have a blessing in the reading and hearing to his word and edification of our soul. Amen. Amen. Shall we pray? Most gracious eternal Father God. So once again, I call we come to you once again. Thank you, dear Father, for watching over us while we slept last night. And when we woke up this morning, our Father, you was there, our Father. That we just want to say thank you, our Father. Father, you touch us with your finger, Lord, once again, our Father, just to see a brand new day, another Sunday. And most of all, we have our health and strength once again. Dear Lord, we ask that, Father, on those, our Father, who are not their best this morning, our Father, but you know all about their issue, our Father, wherever it may be, our Father. We ask the our Father, just look on them the most mindful way just stay by your father that they might be healed and dear lord who's on those our father in hospitals at home whoever it may be our father we ask you to touch in the name of jesus our father and look on those our father who are in bereavement dear me father at this time dear lord we know our father we all must leave here one day our father but we know our father that we put all our trust in thee our father because you god almighty is god by yourself and we ask your father just to look on us in a mindful way, our Father, that some way, somehow, our Father, that we all get better doing what we are doing for Thee, our Father, because without Thee, our Father, I won't be saying this prayer, our Father. As the Father, I just know, our Father, you are a way maker, truth, and a way of life, our Father. And we ask that, Father, just to strengthen us right now, where we're weak, with our faith, make us strong day by day, our Father, whatever we do, our Father. And remember, our Father, that we must. Read your word, study your word, and tell us about thee, our Father, because right now, Father, we in a turmoil world where folks, our Father, don't want to believe or accept you, our Father. You're the creator anyway, our Father, regardless of what they say, our Father, you are God all by yourself. And we ask that, Father, just to strengthen us, our Father, that we are able just to withstand the darts of the devil, our Father, that we'll come to, our Father, that see, our Father, that you are God, and God, our help, our Father. Dear God, we ask that Father strengthen this 
world, these children, these young folks, everywhere, Father, is going straight day by day, Father. Father God, this is my prayer this morning, Father. We ask all of these blessings in thy son, Jesus' name, for Christ's sake. We do pray you ask. Amen. 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 Thank you for that fervent prayer. It is very fitting because we certainly need God and we need him all the time. Yeah. And uh, if we were to download the Jesus app in the Bible and read it a little more, well, right. then there's so many entanglements, you know. Yes. But in this lesson, we see faith, courage, mm -hmm. confession, and correction. Mm -hmm. And it talks in about it, but let this another lesson that's really fitting for us. Kind Father, speak through me as I prepare to teach this lesson. Mm -hmm. Let me say what you want me to say, present it in a way that it'll be meaningful and there is a life application for us all. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Faith, the title of this lesson is Ezra, a faith and action preacher. And it's coming out of Ezra, the 10th chapter, verses one through 12. And if we had to do a subtitle on it, it was, like I said, Confession and Correction. So the question is, who is Ezra? And, and I, I took this approach to just say, in case somebody, well, you know, we don't, we don't talk about it much, but who is it? Well, he was a priest that come out of the lineage of Aaron, the chief priest and the scribes, it was on his own right. He was a religious leader of the Jews who had returned from exile in Babylon. He was a reformer who reconstituted the Jewish community on the basic of the Torah or the law uh, the, uh, of the Old Testament. He had a zeal for God and God's law, which spurred him to lead a group of Jews back to Israel. This occurred during the King Exarel reign over the Persian Empire, which was once replaced by the Babylonian Empire, but was who originally exiled the people, the Jewish people, and for their hard headedness and disobedience uh, to God's law. Oh. Well, that's how they got in there. <laughs> Prolonged sin and disobedience it gets you in trouble every time. And this is right. what we'll see. And then, yeah, okay, but when you repent and turn back to God, uh, he certainly will bless you. So let me see. Let's just ask this question. Try and answer this question. What did Ezra do? Well, okay, just like I said, he led the people of Judah in prayer of repentance by he started reading from the book of the law, and he worshipped the Lord with. Uh, he worshipped the Lord with it. You know, worship is always in order. But when we worship God, we must worship him in spirit and in truth. So let me just uh, say, read verse 10, or verse 1, of, uh, and ask, what was Ezra's contrition? And then maybe he reads the verse, now when Ezra had paid, prayed, and we, when he had confessed, he was weeping and casting himself down before the house of God that had assembled unto him out in uh, the the outer course, and it was all the congregation that was made up of men, women, and children, for the people wept as well. Well, we see Ezra had remorse, because he was a man of God. He was a true prophet. He was faithful uh, in his calling to prophesy and trying to lead the people and get back to God. He was remorseful for the condition of their sinful ways. Uh, and as he was praying in and out of court, he was had made sure that was, everybody had access to him. His, his prayer was out in the open. He was really confessing uh, and asking God for forgiveness for those people's sin. And, and that by being in the open, there was a whole, there was a whole congregation there that was uh, was was witnessing his remorsefulness. And as you will see in on, as we get on into the lesson, the next section, uh, that that when we pray and we really go to God, and as we as Christian, especially leaders, when we are living uh, 
a righteous life and really have dedicated ourselves to the truth and obeying the truth of God, we can't help but to feel some remorse for the sinful condition that's going on around us. And what we do, we go and make any accessory prayer for the sinful condition because it, it brings into focus the New Testament scripture said, blessed are they that mourn for righteousness. Mm -hmm. And what it is saying to us is this really is what's been going on in this lesson. Ezra was remorseful, he was weeping and for the condition that he wanted in, in, his, uh, in during his time and for the nation of Israel, because he wanted to change. And we're gonna get into what was that, what did they do? That, 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 that's what did they do? We see what he did now, because he was really interceding and he was praying for them to not listen. We need to, to, we need to, to change and get back to God because you have really strayed away from what God had commanded you to do. See, Israel was God's chosen people and he wanted him to stay pure to them. And uh, so, uh, the people that was listen, you're always going to have somebody in the crowd that your prayer or your lifestyle is going to touch and uh, say, okay, I will, I can uh, admit to my sin. And so I'm getting on into the next part of the lesson. But uh, before I get there, but he was telling, uh, and then as, as I'm saying, let me just get my words together. People was listening. And they were moved by Ezra, who was the leader there, his remorsefulness. Okay. And they began to openly weep in for the temple. See, this is, as I was trying to say, this is uh, the reaction from people when there is power in prayer. We know there is power in prayer. And yeah. this is what Ezra was, was doing. He was really praying for the conditions of that the, the people and and he being a prayer faithful man went to God in prayer and he was I mean that's why he was out in the open he was there was no shame in his game he wanted everybody to know how he felt about the condition okay it's one thing for us to have these feelings and be remorseful but if nobody knows it then he's just it's kind of dead isn't it so mm -hmm. and that's about when you know, James <laughs> says, faith without works is what? Dead. Mm -hmm. So we see here that Ezra is getting ready to put his, his he's putting his faith in action caused by him openly praying for the condition. And we see that there's some of the uh, people in the crowd begin to join him in their contriteness. Or they, they, they recognize the fact that yeah, I have done wrong. And all this is done wrong against God. So there was a call to action. Okay, we're talking about this faith in action here, we see. So when we see here, I'm, I'm in verses two through four, okay, if you're wondering where I am. Uh, there was this man, Nashina, the son of Joel, one of the sons of Elam, went to Ezra and said this, we, I'm paraphrasing these, these verses. Mm -hmm. We have transgressed against our God. We have taken strange wives from the people of this land. Yet now there is hope in Israel concerning this thing. Yet there's always hope when we can admit that we have sinned and go to God and ask for forgiveness. Now, let me finish reading this and tell you what he did. Now, we let us make a new covenant, and I'm putting the word new, and a covenant with our God to put away these wives. Now, that's a big step. Now, that's a bold action. With them, they married all these women. Now, this, this uh, I mean, this I've said, use the word brash, but not in a negative way. Young man had come to Ezra and said, listen, Ezra, here's what you need to do. We gonna come and make a covenant with God because we have broke that original covenant. We moved over here. You was brought over here in captivity for our hard headedness and mm -hmm. sinful for a condition. Now we are really compiled on that issue and we have taken these strange wives 
and we have broke the law and even we our forepants was warned by Moses before we got in the promised land not to he gave us the do's and the don'ts of when we get into the promised land. He told us who was over there and told us not to go get in mingling up with these strange women. <laughs> <All right now. laughs> and don't be practicing their religion because they acting witchcraft and uh, and and worshiping idols and all that he told us, but we did listen. And so now we have a mess on our hands. We got right. these strange women. We got him now. Some of them have children. Right. So now he's calling on Ezra to now listen. You you got to take some bold actions here, brother. I want you to just take and just go and just get and take this matter, but I want you to do it according to the law. He was not encouraging Ezra to, to just say, okay, everybody get lost. All of you fond women get lost. <laughs> you know, but, right. but he wanted that was a way to do it. And he was encouraging Ezra, being he the leader and the fake man, uh, to say, let's we, we since we made this mess. Since we broke God's covenant law, we want to kind of correct the situation. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was an admission of guilt and a confession of the guilt because they knew they weren't supposed to take those strange wives, but they did it anyway. Mm -hmm. So now uh, they're trying to correct the situation when it's better to not to make the mess and adhere to what you've been taught in the first place. You know that phrase, it may sound cliche, but it's, it's very factual. Obedience is better than sacrifice. All right. they, they, have, they had been in captivity because of their disobedience mm -hmm. and failing to repent and to live according to God's uh, holy laws, right? When we know better, we're supposed to do better. But do we do it? No, because sin is so strong. And if we don't rely on God and his presence and his spirit to uh, help us resent, uh, refrain from getting falling into same traps, mm -hmm. uh, then we got to make the corrective action. We got to take corrective action, okay? Now, so we see their hard headedness cause them to be in captivity. But in this setting, they, this is a group, Ezra led a group back to, uh, to their native homeland. But he was he was remorseful. And we see what hard-headedness gets you. Solomon hard-headedness calls him the king because he was told not to take up all these wives. But you know the story of the, uh, Solomon. He had all these wives and all these concubines and, and he started worshiping these idol gods. And he just, and God told him, that, if you don't repent, I'm going to take the kingdom away from it. And that he did because Solomon didn't listen and he took the kingdom away from him, see? Mm -hmm. And that's it, that really plays into that phrase, uh, obedience is better than sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And right. we see the sin started way back there in the garden when Eve listened to Satan and his lies and she didn't <laughs> obey him. <laughs> didn't obey him either. So we, and from then on, we all got this mess going on, but we have to be, Hey, it's something we got to pay for. So, but there is a way out. And he told them, said, now listen, uh, you guys got to repent. That's why we see here, they, they admitting that that's guilt. See, you know, repentance is what? It's a three-step process, right? Right. We have to admit through our guilt, then we have to confess our guilt, then we have to turn away from that guilt and make a new start. See, we hear, you see all of this right here in this lesson. And then he said, okay, they admitted they did wrong. They confessed that they did wrong. Now he's telling Ezra, now I want you to tell Mr. Man of Faith, and I'm paraphrasing, take some bold action. Let's just get rid of these women that we got here. Mm -hmm. You know, because we have to remake really a covenant with God so that we can live in peace and get back in God's good graces, if I can use that terminology, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's why he said, these are the bold actions here. Well, then think about it. When you are uh, uh, saying, okay, now he, we've married these women and we have, many of them had children. So you're saying, you have suggested break up the family. 
Divorce is never a good thing, mm -hmm. and even today. But that's what he was pro he was proposing to Ezra and said, now, we, we made this, that was our sin. That was our, our disobedience. Uh, we married him anyway. Now many of we have children, but here's my suggestion. Just put them away. That's what divorces mean, put them away. Okay. Uh, uh, and he was proposing this to try to, to, to pray or to avoid God, to spare themselves of God's future judgment and consequences uh, for not only for themselves, but for the faith community, okay? Now, so what action did Ezra take? He, 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 he acknowledged this was, uh, was a harsh suggestion of what he is asking to do, what he was at. But what Ezra did, being a man of faith, what did he do? He went in prayer. Mm -hmm. He went in prayer. So what does that say? When we get ready to make a decision, it is wise or prudent for us to seek God in prayer, okay? This young man has suggested that's bold and harsh action suggestion for Ezra to take. But Ezra being a man of God, he wanted to do things in accordance to God's law. But what he did was he went into prayer before he made any, or he made a move. Okay. And that's why I'm saying it's it's always wise. Okay, what are we getting ready to do? Right. I, we consult with God because you know God's ways are always different from our ways we right. may be thinking to go straight down the middle or go round about when God says just something different but one thing we do know is God's ways is better than our ways because his knowledge is far exceeds our little knowledge so I commend Ezra for going in prayer he fasted and he prayed and then in three days, he reassembled the people. And he, the weather was bad. It was said it was raining. But they stayed there. And they came out because they wanted to hear what the man of God had to say. Because I'm, I'm sure many of them had already recognized, in fact, from Ezra's open remorse for praying for the sin, they knew they had done wrong in the first place. Ooh. So now is the opportunity for them and since they have been returned home to their homeland to get back on track and re-establish their relationship, their covenant relationship with God, because they had disobeyed his orders in the first place. When you disobey God, we are, are destroying our covenant relationship with God. Okay, so now... Uh, They, they knew, as I said, they knew they had practiced, uh, did wrong. They was practicing idolatry, which was a violation of the first commandment. commandment. They had married outside of their faith of Israel, and that was an abomination. So I don't care regardless of what you do against God's command. Sin is sin. I mean, regardless of the sin, and it has to be atoned for. It's got to be some repentance and forgiveness and admit. So when we see that marriage is an institution established by God, okay? He sanctioned marriage between a man and a woman. In this case, he told Israel, do not marry outside of your own kind. You marry other Israelites. But they disobeyed. Now they have to try to make a way. So, what was Ezra's command? He said, I want you, all of you who have violated this law, to separate yourselves from your unbelieving wife. And this was a kind of divorcement. And when I was reading this, I, what came to my mind 
And I know we've heard to say that uh, being unequally yoked, yes. mm -hmm. and that takes into when you are a believer and you are marrying an unbelieving spouse, because it could happen a wife or the man or the woman, it's always best to find you marry another saved person because it's going to be hard to bring that unbeliever into the believing realm because first they don't even acknowledge that they are God or if they do, they don't believe him enough to accept him and walk in his way, okay? And, but there has been occasions when uh, one spouse or the other was not a believer and after staying with the, the other spouse, they did convert over. That's not an always common, but it can happen. And but that's what they want you to do is to not be unevenly yoked. And it's talking about marriage. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that way, if you do it right in the first place, we won't have to be going through maybe sometime divorces. Okay. And here they was they, they broke the covenant because they didn't marry their own kind of women. They had married women out from that where they were in the captivity, right? So we is calling on this brave, courageous man of God to bring down and to uh, said, okay, here's what we got to do to make situation right. First of all, I want you to separate yourself from your unbelieving wife. That's, that's the first thing. He wasn't afraid and he had to take a bold stand when to do that. Because look at the emotions and the feelings that were going on between that what could and probably did occur between the women and the children. Now think about divorces in this in this situation in this in this country. When there is a divorce, the children, if they have children, it's going to be the blue pawns caught in the middle, and it's mm -hmm. always hard on those children. Yeah. Uh, and as for if the divorce has to happen. It is best if the two parties can remain uh, cordial or uh, respectful to one another for the sake of the children. I can speak about my own. He wasn't always good, but who was who was caught in the middle was the children, as all is always the children who suffers the most. But then there had to be feelings and emotion between the two spouses. And we're asking to separate that out. That was a bold, courageous step to take. But in order to try to reconcile the wrong that was done, it was felt that this was the, the necessary or the right action to take. Well, <laughs> because <laughs> it's, it's tough, I'm telling you. Uh, because one is we wanted to try to preserve the nation and bring God's people back to him and his commandments and obey, obeying his commandments, okay? So when we are asked to do something or how to do something, and it is, and, and you've heard me preach this phrase, repeat this phrase a few times this lesson, Obedience is better than sacrifice. It is better for us to obey the laws of God, okay? And to break them and to try to go back and have to repent. But it is good that we have an out. We can always repent and go to God and say, I'm sorry, I confess that I have done this wrong. And here I'm... Uh, throwing myself at your mercy to forgive me of my sin, but I have to make, be willing to make that change and not keep sinning and doing the wrong thing. Now let's look at it from this scenario. What if, and this is just a scenario for a discussion, okay, later we don't, is that they said, yeah, I admit that I've, I've sinned, I did this and I did, but I'm not willing to put my wife away. Whoa then you steal, then what will be the purpose of admitting that you broke the law? But if you want to reestablish 
that covenant relationship, and this is what they were trying to do, is to reestablish that covenant relationship with God and not be out of fellowship with him by breaking his covenant law, then we're going to have to make this, those firm decisions and take bold and courageous actions. Okay. Now, let me say this. There are some things that's very troubling to me uh, in this country <clears throat> as far as marriage is concerned. Okay? And let me see if I can say it this way. Marriage is an institution established by God. And I said this earlier, between a man and a woman. When he established the marriage, he said for men, Adam and Eve, right? He didn't say Eve and Ethel or Adam and Steve. <laughs> Adam and Steve, okay? When Noah went into the ark, he took what? Male? One, two. Right, right. Male and female of every kind, right? Yeah, right. So they could reproduce. Right? Yeah. He didn't put two of the same sex mm -hmm. and expect them to reproduce. I'm just saying what I just said without saying what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> my point to that is it's back to that phrase obedience yeah. is better than sacrifice. sacrifice. All day, every day. Right. I got a question. Uh, okay. Oh, you got a question. All right. Give me one second here. Okay. Uh, but when we do, we must, if we want to restore our relationship, because when listen, when we sin, we might be here, but, uh, but we are sinning before God as well. And that's what David always recognized when he messed up. He recognized the fact that he had sinned before God and he was smart enough to go to God and ask for forgiveness. Yeah. So when we go and we mess up, just go to God and ask for forgiveness because you got to confess it and acknowledge your sin and say, Lord, I want to be, I, I help me to never do that again because there's lessons in our hard-headedness when uh, 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 adversities come upon us and we need to ask God, what is the lesson you want me to learn? If I know I done done something wrong, Help me never walk in that road again. Okay, now what's your question? Um, if God forgives us of our sin, mm -hmm. okay, we've established that, then my question would be, then why are we also judged since we're forgiven? You know, why? like on we're gonna okay, like on judgment day, we're gonna be judged. So if we're already been forgiven, why then are we judged? Well, we're going to be judged, and if you have been forgiven and you have to return away from your sins and have not done that anymore, he's going to say to you one thing. Good and faithful servant, job well done. He never would have made the provision for us to repent and turn back to him because when he forgives us of that sin, he doesn't bring it back up to us. That's always, it's gone. It's gone. He said he put it in the sea of forgetfulness. Okay. So he has to judge right and wrong. So when we mess up and we are imperfect people serving a perfect God, but one thing about it, he is a loving and forgiving God. And he's willing to forgive us of our sin. But we can't keep going back. We shouldn't. I was thinking that's, that's right. You know, shouldn't keep going back right uh committing that same sin now that we are living in a fallen world we have to remember that but and temptation is all around us and that's why i always say we have to rely on god and his spirit the holy spirit to keep us out of satan traps because satan is so smooth mm -hmm. and he's so cunning that he will uh he will uh trap us every time but when we stay prayed up, covered up with yeah. the grace of God oh, and, right. his, and his protection, he will help us fight Satan 
And because we are no match for Satan in our own strength. And when we can reflect on Jesus's temptation, Satan tempted him from three points of view. He tempted him for his flesh because he was in his humanness. He was hungry after 40 days. He told him, to, now you, you could, if you be the son of God, you uh, turn these stones into bread. That was his, his physical hum hunger side. Ben Oz, we said, oh yeah, let me just get some. Then when he showed him the kingdoms, he said that was powerful and he'd be ruler over many. And we always had that power, the desire being powerful and, 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 and greed and materialistic. So that's why he, and, and was Matthew 6, 33 said, peep your eyes on the things of heavenly thing instead of this materialistic stuff, because okay. it is going to soon pass away. Heaven is forever. So once you have your treasure stored in heaven, that's a lasting thing. And I, I hope I've answered your question with you me did. going off. You did. So no, you, did. That, you said that uh, even on the day of judgment, if we've been living right and, asked, and we've asked for forgiveness, then we will be led into the kingdom. There you go. But you could be judged, and maybe you might have been like in between where you might have done something. You just said, you know what? I'm already here, so here I am. Where you know, you said, you know, you need to repent. Mm -hmm. so it's all about repentance. It's all about repentance. And hopefully, we never get to the point that we feel hopeless where we cannot go to God and ask for forgiveness. But when we admit that our sin, we got to be true to our own self. And said, right. Lord, I have committed this sin. And when I'm feeling guilty about something, we have to admit, honestly say, where did it start from? If somebody wronged us, we have to be willing to forgive them because we all been forgiven. We wasn't, when we, since Adam, we was all born in the sin with the sinful nature. Now we have the ability to choose. And I'm going to say right and wrong or good and evil. And the good, you're going to follow God. Christ and his way, bad you're going to go fall and say, but that is a way out and that is called repentance. Remember Jesus paid our sin debt. Our account on God's uh, heaven's bank account is marked paid in full in all capital letters. Okay, all right. So then, repentance is our way out and we have to really be truthful and sincere when we make our repentance, well, this is what happened here in this lesson. Yeah, they done wrong. They admitted they done wrong. And they were ready for bold action to, to make it right with their relationship with God. And sometimes we might have to, I'm getting into my conclusion. We have to make those bold, tough actions and hard decisions to make things right with God. Because you know, his standards is what we all gonna be judged by. He's not gonna compromise with us because the world says, it's okay if you just have a little sin. It's okay, that's not what God said. That's what we have to measure. What does God say about his standard? We, if we believe in him, we are set aside out of this world but we are left here to be a shining light for somebody else because we never know who is watching us and our lifestyle. But if we say we are Christian and living like the world, then we are no better than the world. If we have mm -hmm. no power in our prayer life or in our walk with Christ. We see Ezra was walking with God and he had his prayer was powerful and it had drawing power because it sparked this young man to step out and say, Ezra, we have done wrong. We are admitting our wrongness. Now I recommend you, if you go and take these bold actions, we have to put away these wives because it's more important for me to get my relationship right with God than to be worried about what society says. Okay, that was some bold action. And what this say for us as leaders today, we must be willing to make hard decisions as long as it aligns with God's word. Okay, now there's, there's a lot that's going on that there is compromising being going within our 
faith community. And all I'm saying is what's uh, taking a cue from this lesson is what I've always felt that we as Christian folks and especially leaders have to stand firm on the truth of God's word because that's what we're going to be judged by. And if we say we are in leadership and don't tell the people what the truth of God's word is, we are going to be punished with many stripes. Whereas if we tell you all and you don't do it, then that's on you because we've done what we're supposed to do. So here we see some hard actions coming into play. And that's so we have got to take a stand against a lot of these evil uh, and compromising uh, so-called worldly things that's going on in our community and it's gonna it's filtrating into our churches because they they the Chris, some of the Christian folks are saying, well, it, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. You know, but like I said earlier, sin is sin. And I don't want to just take, oh, that's just a little sin and end up nibbling my way and leading other people into lostness. I don't want to do that because personally, when I accepted Christ and grew enough to keep uh, walking in him, I said then, I'm going to obey the scripture. It's, always going to, it's not going to always be easy. It's not going to always be pretty. But I have a God to glorify, and I have him to give an account to. Uh, if I can use you as this example, you don't have no heaven to put me in. Well, <laughs> no. <Nah. laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. just trying to keep it 100 here. Yeah, okay. so, <laughs> so when we commit ourselves mm -hmm. and accept it, then we have to really be willing to make the hard choices. We have to put our faith in action. If we are saying, I'm going to obey the truth, that means just all of the Bible is his word. We have to be able to uh, to, to uh, obey. Right. Okay. And doing so, we prevent harsh judgment and punishment. Like these people have returned out of captivity. Remember, these was in captivity for 70 years. Mm -hmm. And I'm mm -hmm. close with this. I do feel, and I've always felt, this pandemic is one of our pestilence before our hard-headedness and compromising on the truth of God's word. We allow too many little sins into the church and into our lives to God has said, I'm tired, enough is enough. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this lesson. I thank you for the word and to be able to bring the word and to share it and hopefully that it will be applicable to our lives, that we will stand on the truth of your word, regardless of what action we have to take. But then Father, allow us to live according to your word in the first place, so we will not have to be judged harshly for our disobedience because your justice is, can be harsh. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 amen.